I'm interested in the power of drawing and how it sits within the contemporary practices. It's very labor intense. I'm using my whole body. It's a quite highly charged activity that I'm involved in. It's also like a, a love affair. So it's poetic in that sense. In all the, the, the time that I create these drawings, I know they're temporary. So in a way, I'm already saying goodbye when I begin the first mark. When I'm working, it's like the air I breathe. It's like life itself, and I'm happy when I'm working. I straddle my career between two fields I work on paper, also canvas, but also I do these installations. The installation is ideally just another translation, extension, expansion from the 2D work. When I do an installation, it's very much offers a space to experiment, to test, to reflect. And when I'm creating a wall drawing, it's about presenting drawing, another understanding in drawing, and kind of making a huge statement. Visibility is quite symbolic. I'm immediately thinking about that, that physical space. And what goes in my mind is, how do I interact? How does my work speak to an audience in that, that huge space? And sometimes these spaces can be very intimidating. Burden of Proof surfaced in 2018. It then emerged that high hundreds of Caribbean citizens, who particularly came from the Windrush generations, were denied legal status, deported, and basically categorized as illegal immigrants. I was quite angry. I was quite upset. And I, and I immediately thought of my mother and my father would they be subjected to this? And to think that these citizens contributed, was invited to Britain to help support the country after the Second World War, and then to be categorized as illegal immigrants, it's heart-wrenching. It's very callous, it's very sad, I need to make work about it. I need to respond to it. I realized why these individuals were a bit apprehensive in coming forward. A lot of them were tired, ground down. They're either waiting for the results of an application or the shame. You know, we are often told not to talk about our business or share our private business in public. That's another erasure, quietness, a quiet erasure happening behind the scenes. Part of the process was the need to gather documents, that paper trail to prove their legal status. <sighs> so imagine trying to find documents from a child, school reports these mundane, forgotten, ephemeral pieces of papers are now become the oppressive instruments to prove their le legitimacy. So with that in mind, I asked the participants if they give me two documents, and that would be the backdrop. And then there's the overlapping of their portraits on the documents. They're quite provocative in many ways, because they're telling a story. It also reveals these individuals have contributed to this country. They're not stats on a piece of paper. These are real people, these are real lives. But then also there's a tension within the documents, the overlapping of the figure on the drawing, it's deliberate, because it's almost like the documents is now more important than these individuals. I will then translate that drawing into the wall as well, so they appear various in various forms in that space and that's how I'm curating that space and that's how I imagine that space would be. So you can hear their voices through the work and also the expressions. I'm always thinking about the light and shade of a concept. 
And also with this, it's also looking at individuals who's been directly affected by the scandal, but also those connected to these participants, the partners, possibly the children. So there's a rippling effect in terms of generational rippling effect. It's still ongoing. These are the pieces from the Louder Than Words um, series. And these are both drawings of Solomon, my son. These represents his dockets that he was given to by the police. Uh, here, the white signifies trying to erase the experience, the feeling. So I've, I've always been erasing my work. Consciously or subconsciously, I've been always erasing. It's one of the key signature to my practice, I guess. How do you represent and show erasure or exclusion within the art piece? I'm fascinated by the body, the figure, but also in terms of the black body or the, the black aesthetics, I wanted to break down the, the stereotype or erosive image that I found in the media. You're never totally objective to the work. I'm always there. It's my hand, also my DNA, my, my imprint is on that work. But it's also, dare I say, it's about me, the visibility of me, making a statement. The message is taken usually the anonymous or the powerless of a subject, usually an individual or the black subject. And I'm very much interested in the body politics, identity, belonging and power in terms of how power manifests itself in society and who owns the power. With that, I subvert that, that narrative and take those who are excluded bringing them into a space, bringing them to the surface, giving, giving them back the power or giving them the permission or telling their stories. What I do hope is that people can see, engage, read the work and from it somehow we can contribute to making something better.